Welcome to the Age of Jeremy. This is another lo-fi episode, and this is a crazy lo-fi episode, and I don't know how this is going to work because I am currently driving to Las Vegas, and I have a road mic on my microphone, on my microphone, on my glasses, and we're trying to record this podcast, so enjoy. Who are you calling to me from outside of a dream? If this is your first time tuning into the podcast, my name is Jeremy Quintanilla and you're listening to a lo-fi episode. This podcast is all about the adventures that I have, building my business empire. I own businesses like 3 2 Warrior Academy, Age of Radio, Q Financial, and Merlin, the smartest way to track your crypto, to name a few. And I am going to continue to be an entrepreneur and build and build and build. But this episode is all about, I want to say, just kind of like the things that I'm reading, the things that I'm learning. There might be some business stuff. I try to do these every other week or a couple of times a month. It all varies. Um, And so this is going to be um, one of those lo-fi episodes. Um, The regular episode will probably come back next week. I'm currently recording this on my drive to Las Vegas. And just with all the stuff that we had going on, I didn't have a chance to record an episode. Uh, But that being said, there's two things that I do want to push right now to you. The first thing is just a couple, well, there's three things. First thing is make sure that you follow the Age of Radio verse Instagram channel because I go live on there once a week. You can learn about new podcasts. There's podcast news. We're working on adding gaming news um, and we're working on all other kinds of content to push out through that Age of Radio live. Uh, and then the other thing, the second thing is join my uh, my Age of Jeremy updates. It's called Dope Updates. It's a channel inside of Instagram. I'm gonna try to push that more frequently on stories for you to join. The reason why I'm saying that is because I'm going to talk about more of what I'm actually investing in on there, um, specifically like why I'm investing things, the amount that I uh, have invested uh, in relative to my uh, portfolio. And so those are some of the things that I'm really going to be pushing that's only going to be people that are in that specific channel. Uh, for example, I talked a little bit about Tesla and what my thoughts were on Roby, robo taxis and building out a portfolio. So as I build out that portfolio and move forward with that, I will be putting that specifically in that channel. Uh, so make sure that you follow me there. And then also make sure that me follow me on LinkedIn uh, at Age of Jeremy or Jeremy Quintanilla because I'm going to be working on uh, a newsletter that will be eventually coming out through just LinkedIn um, and I'll be doing some more content on LinkedIn. Uh, as far as my Age of Jeremy YouTube, I haven't made any of the Reality Bytes videos because I've been over... Uh, um, I I don't have uh, enough support at this exact moment, which is something that happens with business owners. And I had to pull back on doing that because I was the one that was doing that videos. So I'm working on kind of getting those back uh, uh, in action, Um, but it may take a a little bit longer than I would want it to. uh, But unfortunately that's what it's gonna have to be. So those will be coming out. So if you want to follow on Age of Jeremy YouTube, I'm working on getting more and more content up there as well. And then the third thing, uh, we have a a thing called Warrior Ascension in our 3T Warrior Academy. It takes everybody from uh, starting out learning about financial literacy, and then they do a four-week webinar. They'll get to meet me, uh, but they do the webinar every week with Coach JV, and then there's other things that you learn as far as um, going creating financial wealth and how to protect that wealth as you gain it. So I highly recommend that if you have a chance, uh, go to the link in this episode description. There is a link that will take you over to form, fill that form out, and we will have one of our um, onboarding specialists or team members reach out to you to teach you more about what it does and the benefits of it and what the cost is and so forth and so forth. And so you can't really go wrong with it because as you have seen with the stuff that's going on in the world, it is super, super important that you are working on yourself harder than anything else. So the first thing that I want to talk about today in this lo-fi episode is I'm barreling down the freeway. 
Hopefully you can hear some of that bad bunny in the background. Uh, so first thing, uh, I uh, am again still continuing to learn German and I'm also continuing to met, uh, spend more time with the Spanish piece of it. I, I wanna talk a little bit about ethnomusicology and music uh, and what I've been trying to study. So every few weeks, uh, I kind of like sit down and try to research on what I can study from an ethnomusical musicology standpoint that would be interesting. And so there's some really interesting stuff that I want to kind of study. Uh, and so the only problem is, is that I'm making it a little bit difficult based off of the, the, the text that I need to read it on, where it's located in the world to be able to get field recording stuff. And so I kind of like took a step back uh, and am really refocusing some of my attention on uh, Mesoamerica uh, and First Nations here in the United States or indigenous peoples in, in the Americas. I've been thinking a lot about it and I don't think that we spend enough time, <laughs> excuse me, I don't think that we spend enough time promoting the Americas just in general. like. The things that happen in South America, the things that happen in Central America, the things that happen in North America. I think that, and, and this could be for me because I was born in Arizona, um, and a lot of people in Arizona are very anti-immigrants and very uh, can somewhat come off as they're anti-Spanish, even though our whole culture is based around the Southwest, which is very Spanish and very Native American. And so I was always taught that you don't really go to Mexico because it's dangerous. And that could have just been because of the way that I was raised. It could have just been because of the state. Um, it could have been just my own fears, whatever the case is. And so I think that we're missing out on lots of opportunities in the Americas that I feel that people in Europe don't have for a couple of reasons. One, they're very fluid in their ability to move between borders um, and, and be okay moving between borders and comfortable because there's there that's easier to do it. Okay. The second thing is because it's easier to do it because the countries aren't as big, they're able to move between different countries, which allows them to be a little bit more cultural. And I'm hoping that I can move to be doing that more over the rest of my life in the United States, uh, and into Mexico and into Canada and into uh, Central America and South America. Obviously there's also the Caribbean's part of the Americas, if I remember correctly. Uh, and Greenland's part of the Americas. Uh, and so I think that we should do a much better job, or I want to do a much better job, talking and educating people about all of the vast cultures that make up the First Nations and Mesoamerica and South America. And I've been reading some Native American books over the weekend, uh, and it's really fascinating to see the, the thought is that people came from Asia and then they went over into uh, the Americas before, I want to say, <clears throat> before it got disconnected. But it's amazing to see that the, the, the indigenous people uh, were able to come from the other continent, come here and then go down into South America and then to make different civilizations. Uh, and so I think that the Mesoamerica civilizations are very interesting because of the fact that they in, in, in came up with their own writing. Uh, I think that the Native American uh, people are very interesting because of their ability to make a style of flute that is the first style of its kind, having a double, I forgot what it has, it's a double air, uh, it's got like a double air entrance piece of it, I, I don't know the terminology, and so, which encourages me to study flutes, which again, with Sakuchi, Sakuchi I think is how it's pronounced, um, the Japanese flute, is that, is that it goes along with meditation. So there's this concept between both multiple different generations or multiple different cultures where the flute is something that's utilized for meditation and for those types of practices. And so to study that uh, interests me. The second thing that, study, that interests me about that type of study is being able to see like what, how music was created over here because it seems like the f concept of music and the way that notes were structured was something that I believe the Greeks came up with, but don't quote me on that. And that's why I want to go to school to become a musicologist so I can talk about this. Uh, and so that interests me too, to see how they created music and if they had a different note system for how to do the different notes that would then transpire to be similar to what our note scale system is. And so I think that that's one of the routes that I'm going to go while I slowly learn 
the Danish that I need or the Greenlandic. And also too, if you think about it, the Inuit people of, of, the, um, of Northern uh, North America that are in Greenland, they also have some their own distinct language, and I believe that distinct language bled into the Greenlandic language. And so I find that very interesting, and I also want to see how music transpires between those peoples and what it has created. Uh, a lot of the studying that I want to do has to do with the, uh, the how has to do with music in a religious context and how music is used in religion to incite um, a spiritual awakening, incite spiritual or religious, uh, <coughs> I guess, excuse me, religious events, uh, like, like personal events, like if you're dancing or you're getting into it, why that, that happens and how that can be exasperated with the way in which music moves you and changes you. Uh, also in occultism, you utilize the notes for different vibrational keys throughout our body. And so there is a book that I haven't purchased yet because I'll again, um, if you follow me on Instagram, I'm working on paying off some debts and buying and saving and buying some more assets because I want to get some more real estate. Um, and so I'm changing the way in which my, what I'm putting into my portfolio and how I'm managing that. Uh, and so, uh, and so I think that, uh, I think that once I kind of get that organized, there is a book, uh, by the Oxford, uh, Oxford, uh, uh, Oxford, it's called Oxford Handbooks, and it's the Oxford Handbook of, uh, I think it's Ethnomusicology and Medicine or Music and Medicine, uh, because there's a whole branch of music and therapy that leads to people utilizing music for healing. Uh, and I think that that's very interesting because I think many, many cultures, including the Native American cultures or the First Nations cultures and the Mesoamerican cultures utilize that for the healing practice. So from an ethnomusicology and anthropology standpoint, it makes more sense to study the stuff that's here because I have closer access to go and to talk to people if I want to, or to go and record their recordings and so forth. Cause that's like a big part of being a, a, a musician or being an ethnomusicologist or an ethnographer is going and getting the actual recordings of what's happening. And so I think that there's been a lot of work done on the Native Americans. And so I'm gonna start spending some time reading up on that, getting an idea for it. Um, I'm also reading like this book called The Craft of Research, which I think is, is important because one of the things that you don't wanna get into, which I find myself getting into when it comes to trying to find what I wanna study, is that you go, you just go into like a black hole. And so at some point, you have to pinpoint what it is that you wanna write a paper on or do some research on uh, so that you can write that, that's very like, very in, con in, in the sense where it's not very broad, where it's a very precise thing that you wanna do so that you can go and study and answer that and write about it. And then as I write that, I'm gonna share it because A, that's the purpose of writing it so I can share it with the world, but the goal is also to, sh to write more and more stuff so that I can make sure that I am practicing that and, 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 and continuing towards that academic, you know, academic thoughts or, and, and being a scholar in that, that regard. So that's kind of where I'm at with music. So if you can hear it in the background, it's going between Spanish and, and German music. I like listening to it because it makes it so much easier when you go from music to talking you can pick up the words a lot better in my opinion because I listen to only German and Spanish music um, and for the last couple of months I've only been listening to German music and I can make out a, it's like I don't know all of the words like their meanings obviously and the syntax and how they need to be organized for the grammar but the per point is is that when I go and I like read German, they actually start to look like words because they're words that I've heard or words that I've known. Uh, and it also gets me used to hearing it. So when I hear people talking, it's very easy to decipher the different words, which is one of the biggest problems that I think language learners have is because they don't spend enough time with the listening. Like if you're constantly having it in your ear and sleeping with it and all this stuff, you will see that you're, that you're able to, it, it's like the words slow down and you're able to hear them just the way in which you're probably hearing me talk very fast in English right now because I'm barreling down the freeway at 80 miles an hour going to Las Vegas. Um, and so, but anyways, so that's where I kind of at on the music standpoint. I haven't had a chance to practice my guitar as much uh, because of the second thing that I was gonna talk about that I'm doing is really focusing on getting my Series 65 
So I've been focused on my Series 65 with my extra time, which is something I think that Libras have a hard time struggling with, balancing all the things that they want to do. Um, but I'm continuing to work towards that and on that. It's just that it's very difficult for me to see, to not have a Series 65 and not have that credential and then me telling people what I think that they should be doing with their money that I believe and, and for the most part can kind of prove is going to work out the way that I think that it's going to work out, but then not have that credential to be able to provide that for people. And so I think that that's one of the things that I need to get better at, um, that I need to get better at so that I am able to, um, sorry, I thought that a person behind me was a motorcycle cop, but it's just a guy in a motorcycle. I think it's a motorcycle. It's just a motorcycle. It might be a motorcycle cop. I'm not sure. Um, but anyways, so that's something that I'm really trying to do. I guess we'll find out if I get stopped. I think it's just a guy with a motorcycle, but I think he's got a camera on his head, but I'm not sure. Maybe he's like a super cool sports person. No, he's got a camera on his head, but it's not a police officer. It's just a guy. I wonder what he's recording. Maybe he's recording me. I'm gonna see what he's doing. He's got a Scottish flag though on the back of his. He's got a Scottish and an American flag. I think that's a Scottish flag, could be wrong. But anyway, um, so the Series 65 is where I've been spending a lot of my time because I want that credential to be able to have those conversations. And then it's allowing us to move into different areas with our businesses um, with custodialship. Um, and I think that that's one of the next evolutions. It's something that I tried to do back in 2019 and 2020, but I commit to so much stuff, which is one of the biggest things that I encourage you to not do if you're an entrepreneur. Take, take like one or two things, Focus on those things for a very, very, very long time, for a very, very, very hard time, I guess, um, and get really, really good at those things. I think what ends up happening is we get our, all of our creative ideas, we get those juices flowing, we wanna start so much stuff, and then unless you're able to hire the labor or to get the people to do the work for you, it's very hard to get a lot of momentum with those things. And that's one of the things that I'm learning on this journey more and more, even now that I'm seven, 2017, almost 10 years into it, is that you have to hire help as soon as you can or you're never going to be able to grow and leverage the way that you want. And so that's one of the biggest things that I've had to learn and one of the things that I'm still not struggling to learn, but but learning, continuing to learn to not take as much so that I can put more and more towards labor so that you can get more and more momentum. Because the more and more labor that you have, the more and more momentum that you can get, but then it also means the more and more that you have to manage and the more and more that you have to govern the things that they're doing. And that's essentially kind of where I'm at in this process. Uh, the third thing I am, um, if you follow me, I'm gonna be starting to do more of the books that I'm reading. I started to make a, a piece in my Instagram, so follow me on Instagram, uh, Age of Jeremy, obviously. There's a piece in the Instagram that talks about books. And so the last book that I talked about was Thomas Mann. So I'm thinking like, as I'm going through the book, I'm gonna do some stories or some um, TikToks or some shorts that kind of go into, um, shorts that go into talking about those books and then getting back on trying to make the videos. Uh, originally, I wanted to switch my, I guess, my camera and my lens because I don't like the way that the light comes into it, and that's because maybe I didn't have enough light. So I have all the lighting now, and then I, I'm gonna use this Rode wireless that I'm using right now to record this as long as the battery's still working and I'm even fucking recording. Let me see here. Yeah, I, I try to always use these Rodes and they work great, but like, it's never charged when I need to be charged, and I don't know why I suck at the charging piece of it. So, but anyway, um, so I'm gonna really focus on those books. So I'm still reading the Lyndon B. Johnson books, but I've also like pulled back on it. Like I didn't bring it with me on this trip. I'm just gonna read my Apple um, iPad and read some of my uh, Native American books, or I brought some sutras with me because I haven't been spending enough time doing meditations and doing chanting. And I feel that like when you're doing those things, like life and your aura are better protected and that things don't go as like as bad. Like you just are protected from the bad shit and it moves you forward and keeps you lifted up. And so that's one of the biggest things that I think of having a religion, whether it's Christianity, Islam, um, Jainism, Buddhism, 
um, whatever it is, is that having that religion and, and doing those practices, there's something about it that helps keep you focused and grounded on where you're trying to go. And I think when you lose that, it makes it much more difficult to be an entrepreneur. And, and that's just in my experience. I don't know if that's gonna be the same for every single person, but what I can say right now is that in my experience, when I am not doing my chanting, when I am not focusing on Amida Buddha, when I am not focusing on compassion, when I'm not focusing on the six perfections, when I'm not focusing on giving, you can see a change in the way in which your body feels, the way in which your body reacts to energy, the way in which you um, get attacked by uh, what we like to call energy vampires, or I like to call energy vampires. And so keeping all of that stuff moving the way, moving positively, it's important to be doing those spiritual practices. And, you know, I get these ideas in my head that I'm just gonna go super, super hard, but then it like causes me to not do all of this other stuff which is the reason why stuff kind of pulls back and you never kind of find that balance. I think one of the biggest things, uh, especially for Libras or for me, I'm just going to say for me, is always trying to find that balance of stuff. You go hard in one area, it pulls away from another area. Then you're trying to go back to the other area to pull. So the goal is to just really focus on how you're managing your weeks. Uh, and I think when you're able to manage those weeks, you can get a lot more of that stuff in. Uh, so I'm still on the first Lyndon B. Johnson book that I'm 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 uh, reading. Uh, I have not read it in weeks, so I'm going to try to get back to reading that. We're also reading the Changing World Order by Ray Dalio inside of the Entrepreneur Book Club in our uh, business form inside of the Three Two Warrior Academy. Um, and so I'm, I've been having a lot of great conversations about that. Um, I, I he's the first person that I've heard academically. I guess I shouldn't say that. Not I've the first person that I've heard that's not an academic use the term state capitalism to refer to what goes on in China. And I think that that's because he has read Marxist literature, whether that's Das Kapital or whatever the case is. Uh, it, it sounds like he's read that, uh, read Capital One, Two, and Three. And because uh, most people don't realize that China and Cuba, they're not communist. They're what's called state capitalists. So state capitalism just means that the state has the the uh, the ownership of the capital and and can control the means of the production of what the state is doing, and so the idea is is that 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 Marx thought that you had to go that route, and when you were able to do that, you could slowly remove power and, from the government and give it back to the people. But as we have seen, that obviously doesn't work, and it just creates like fascists or they have a, a mixed understanding of what's really trying to take place inside of communism and and i don't think that and i think that that's what's kind of we've been educating and teaching here in the united states and where we use the communists as a as a bad word when in reality it's not a bad word it's a word that we should have a conversation about and i did some tick and i did a TikTok, and i i said some stuff that probably wasn't the nicest about president trump I'm just not a fan of President Trump, and I think that what boggles my mind is I don't understand why people like Trump. Um, and, and when they say because he says whatever he wants, I'm like, okay, well, that's great. That doesn't mean that what he's saying is valid or beneficial or good for the country. Um, and so, and I, I don't think that he will make a good leader. He might make a better leader during wartime. I guess um, he strikes fear into the heart of people. I'm not really afraid of him personally, um, but he apparently supposedly strikes fear in the heart of people. Uh, and and the thing, and when I talk about that, and I'm very and being you know critical of Trump, people always assume that that means that I'm for Biden. But then I'm also very critical about the things that Biden does. He should not be. Biden is is it has nothing to do with his age. A lot of people say that they're too old. That part, I mean, obviously Trump took a bullet got back up and went golfing the next day. So obviously you can do some stuff at your age. I know that Trump's younger than Biden, but like you can see Mick Jagger at 80 running around stage, kicking ass at Rolling Stones concerts. And then you have Biden who is deteriorating in age. And I don't think that that's a good thing for our country. And it's not a good representation of our country. I think that a lot of people forget that the, the president is the representation of the country. And if that president for lack of if that president is not a good moral person then that makes the people of the people uh, in other countries look at us and say they're not good moral people 
And I think that that's the biggest problem that I have with everything that goes on with, with Trump is because, is because he, I don't think that he is a good representation and I don't want him to represent us at, in our country. But at the same time, if we think about the other guy, we don't want that guy to represent us in the country either. And so we're in this weird predicament that we have nobody that can really represent us in the country or that we should have represented us in the country. And that's where our biggest downfall is. And I'll be 100% honest, I hope that this is still recording. Still is, baby. Still is. All right. So, so I went on there on TikTok and I said some stuff that I, I probably should have framed it a lot better. I'm, I'm more, I guess, should be more compassionate towards the things that I said. I don't, and again, I didn't say that I wanted like Trump to die or anything. I don't want him to die. I don't, I don't, what I said was I don't think that he's worth even trying to assassinate. Like, I don't think that he is evil that everybody's making him out to be. I think he just talks and riles people up and he uses that to try to get what he wants. You can just go watch fucking the show that he was on, that he had and see that plain and simple. But I, I just don't think what bothers me is I don't think that he's a person that we should have children look up to. And I don't think that he's a person that we should idolize in any way whatsoever. Uh, and I think that people have a misrepresent either he's misrepresenting who he really is to the public. Um, and, and he's completely different, not in the public. But I have no interest in Donald Trump um, being the president. And again, I have no interest in Biden being the president, which leaves us in a weird conundrum because then <coughs> my vote is going to go for Cornell West or my vote's going to go for Jill Stein or my vote's going to go for um, the Libertarian, I can't remember his name, or it's going to go to the Independent, which is RFK, who's not on the Independent Party but running as an Independent. I don't know if there's anybody on the in the Independent, the Purple Party that is running. I don't know. Um, and so I think that that's, I think this is a situation where we have to be, we have to really focus on us. And, uh, I, I'm trying to get a TikTok to upload that says all of that uh, a little bit better and not so, you know, barreling down the highway at 80 miles an hour around like two motorcycles and like four or five trucks. Uh, and it's, it tries to portray it a lot smoother than I portray it right now. Uh, but back to the books is that, um, we're doing the changing world order. That's what kind of reminded me of that. I don't think that this, I don't think that this is going to lead us to a civil war. Here's the reason why I don't, if it was going to lead us to a civil war, I don't know what that war is going to be over. Uh, if it's going to be over people, if it's going to be over people that are going to die to put President Trump in office, I don't know what the ideology is that they're trying to push forward. Because the only ideologies that I get from it is that is that they want us not to have conversations about gender. They don't want people to have abortions. And they don't want us to not support Israel. I, I, just, I don't know what the ideologies are that they would go to war for, that they would want Trump to be in power. That's what I get confused. That's what I get confused about. Because if it's just the fact that it's an inflationary piece and they think that having Trump in power can reduce the inflation, then I think that it would just be better just to keep voting and keep doing what you're doing and going and doing your MAGA parades and all of that shit. And then we can do this in a way in which we try to vote the other person out. And so I don't know. I, I just don't understand the concept. I don't understand the concept of the Civil War. Also, I've seen some of the people that are in existence today try to plan normal stuff. How would it even work for them to plan different pockets of groups that are fighting other different pockets of groups and then separate it in a way in which there is a there is a one side versus another side. If anything, it's just going to break down and it's just going to be everybody going after everybody else, in which case the government would step in and try to get that under control. And to be honest, I think that they would be able to get it under control because they have more power than us as it relates to weaponry. 
So that's where I just, I, I'm so confused on the concept of the Civil War. Now, I'm not confused on more and people, more and more people going out and voting, more and more people picketing, more and more people fighting for the things that they believe that are right, and getting more and more people involved with politics to push the other group down. So what I mean by that is I think that there would be a lot stronger presence for an evolutionary change where the left and or the right rise up in larger numbers and groups of people to suppress in the boost and the voting and doing things to get more people to vote for the Republican Party. But what's going to end up happening is if Biden wins this, they're going to say it's rigged. If Trump wins it, they're going to say it's rigged. And so we're just going to have a bunch of people whining and bitching back and forth rather than going out there and getting involved in their local politics, getting involved in their local communities and being kind and friendly to their brother. Because in my town, while it's annoying seeing people with Trump flags, because I think people should be flying the American flag which I think more Democrats should fly American flags because it's not a douchebaggy thing to do. It's not a Trumpy thing to do. You can be patriotic and be a Democrat and patriotic and be a Republican. But my point is I'm around Republicans and Democrats all day long and we care about each other and we don't want anybody to get hurt. We want people to live their lives. We just do not agree on certain things like abortion and some to some extent guns. If you know me, I'm all for people having guns. I think we need more guns. I think that we need guns. We need to be able to take down corporations if we need to and we need to be able to take down governments if we need to. Corporations, I mean not small business, I mean like large, large corporations that are the ones because corrupt corporations are feeding the corrupt govern are feeding the governments, making them more corrupt than they already are, than fucking the people. And that's the biggest problem that we have in today's society with the way in which PACs are the people that are actually running this country. It's not a small group of elite people. And if it is a small group of elite people, it's a small group of elite people that have the means to production as capitalists. And then their corporations are the ones that are feeding the changes in the government and the feeding of the corruption that happens in the government to get what they want so that they can have more money so that they can stay in power. That if that could be 100% happening, now, if that is happening in a sense where all these people are meeting together, laughing evilly and coming up with crazy ass plans, I don't know. I think that a, a type of villainry cult like Spectra would be awesome. Spectra is the villain in the James Bond movies, not as prominent in the James Bond books, I don't think, but very prominent in the James Bond movies. So if that's the case, that, or I mean, if that, Either way, I believe that that specifically is happening, and I think that we both don't want that. I think the left and the right both don't want that. It's just for some reason the people on the right idolize the people at the very top of those capitalist co companies, but those people at the top of those capitalist companies or those large corporations are the people that are fucking all of us down here at the bottom or all of the people at the bottom. And that's what's creating the largest wealth gap in history in the United States is because of the fact that they are just focusing on feeding themselves themselves and feeding their friends and not making sure that everybody else is fed. And frankly, that's the main thing that I want to change in the United States. It doesn't mean that we all have to share, give all half of our shares of our money to every single person. It means fuck, let's work together to end homeless in our communities. And you can't do that at a fed level. You can only do that in your city level and you can only do that in your state level. So get out the door, start working to help better your fellow man. And then you'll meet people that are transgender. You'll meet people that have had to have abortions. You'll meet people that may have needed a gun and didn't have one. You'll get to know more and more people. And with that, you can empathize and become more compassionate. And we won't live in this world where we're constantly dividing each other and debating on each other, where at the end of the day, while we think that the way to get to happiness it might be different, we're all searching for happiness and being able to prop like move our family and our lot people in our lives forward. And the more and more that you can connect with those people, the more and more empathy and compassion you'll have. And that is how you make the change. The deciding factor to make abortion illegal in the United States, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong on this, was from a Republican conservative because he did not want his kids he did not want some one day something to happen with his daughter, whether she made a mistake, whether a prophylactic broke, whether she got raped, whatever the case was, he did not want that grandbaby to have to come to him one day 
and say, hey, I have, I somehow I got pregnant, obviously through sex, but I got pregnant and now I have this baby, but I don't want it or I can't have it or in a situation. And that was the deciding factor. And that happened because of compassion and empathy. And I'm not saying that you need to change your opinion on everything and change your opinion on abortion or anything. But what I can say is the more people that you meet and the more people that you know that are going through different situations in life and hearing their story will open up your compassion and your empathy. And that is how people realize the things that need to be equal and that things need to be available for all different types of people. And Biden and Trump or anybody else in the top office can't do that. What can do that is getting outside of your door, widening your for group of people, building relationships with people, taking that time and building a really, really strong network. And the benefit of that also is that as you meet more and more people, especially if you have an entrepreneurial spirit, you're going to meet other people with an entrepreneurial spirit and you're going to come up with ideas and you're going to come up with solutions that need to be created in the world. And that can only be done if you stop secluding yourself, going out there and being in the world, you'll create more empathy, more compassion, and more wealth for yourself over time. At least that's what I found. All right, I'm done going on my soapbox. I just, I, I, it frustrates me because, frustrates me because people think that because I have a anarchistic view on the government and an anarchistic view on corporation communism that I'm trying to take from someone else's pocket to give to my pocket. No. What I'm wanting to do is to educate people to go and learn about what's in other people's pockets and then you can make the decision on how you actually want to help them. And what I can say is that, and I've seen it over multiple generations in my own family, that their opinions and lives have changed the more that they have been involved with people in diverse situations. All right, so just to let you know, I'm in Ve driving to Vegas still and I'm at that place where all those electrical windmills are. Don't even get me started on electrical energy. Although wind energy, which would also power battery plants and electric, I don't know. But anyway, all right, so uh, next up, um, I think that uh, game-wise, I'm not playing any games. Trey, creator Trey, who's the head of our community, man, our Discord, he got, uh, uh, he got me playing, ah, shoot, Zenless Zero Zone Zero, Zenless Zone Zero, I don't know if someone's calling on the phone. Okay, so he got me playing Zenless Zone Zero, a fantastic game. It's on the iPad. I'm trying to play way more games on my iPad, so go check out Zenless Zone Zero. Um, and then if you're not, in, I'm going to put a link in here. If you're not in our gaming Discord, um, go ahead and join our gaming Discord and our Age of Radio Discord. Uh, and the gaming Discord is called Red Wizard Gaming Society. It's a 501, it's not a 501 C. It's a 501A. It's a 501 something that's a society. Um, and so it's going to, I'm going to start working towards that slowly, continuous over time. It's a nonprofit organization. Um, so that part, I'm not super worried about it making me tons of money or anything like that. The goal of it is to spread. It's kind of like taking anthropology, which I'm starting to find is like the thing that I really enjoy that's built into musicology. Um, and into ludology, which is the study of games inside of cultures. Um, and so it's kind of looking at gaming from a historical concept and how they relate to, you know, historically how it relates to um, communities, how communities use games to do stuff. And I think that that's a branch of anthropology or sociology, I guess, that I'm kind of focused on. But anyway, so that it's to propagate ludology and gaming into future generations so we don't lose uh, lose gaming. So like inside of it, we have like rules for games. Um, there are, uh, we have special D and D groups that we have. Uh, and over time, the goal is to get card houses physically places where people can come and play games to hang out like community centers, um, and build it into something, um, something big. Now there will, there is a membership for certain levels that are inside of it, um, that you have to pay for. But as of right now, you don't have to pay for anything, but we're working on that. So if you want to get in on the, the society now, at the bottom, you can be part of the, possibly be part of the board. You can get to know us a little bit better. You can come and share your games, um, what what games you play. Um, again, strategy game. So it's it's all of its video games, it's regular games, it's card games, it's whatever. It's just about propagating gaming moving forward. I think gaming... <coughs> in my opinion, is one of the best ways for people to spend their time and, and get to know each other. And I find it unfortunate that we teach, yes, I, I get 
I 100% get that a child sitting in front of a television all day, hands down, those games, it, while that does benefit them, it would be better if you could get your kid playing with other people in those video games and or getting them to playing at games outside, whether those are sports games, whether it's chess, whether it's Go, and we don't push that enough in our society. And I think that that's something that we need to push further. We need to have chess clubs. We need to have Go clubs. We need to have backgammon clubs. We need to have Mahjong clubs so we can get the kids out of that getting them playing these strategy games, getting them playing these games, because it is very, I'm not gonna be able to quote specific statistical numbers, but it, from my understanding, it is proven that children that play games do better in almost all areas of life. Um, and so I think that it's something to think about because it, it teaches them to think, it teaches them to strategize, and also too, game, gaming and playing games with other people and having to think can really help you increase your uh strengthen your brain over time not allow your brain to be weak have it have it create new neural pathways so that if alzheimer's or some type of memory loss happens it can sustain that um and that's another reason why i'm a big proponent of language learning uh but anyways so play as many games as you can I'll, i'm going to start talking more about that in these low fives and because of the games that we're playing and things like that um and coming up with strategies and talking about those um in fact my most popular and i don't know why i just don't do this more one of my most popular um tiktoks is showing how to play dose which i still have played like one time because i can never find people to play with um but anyway <laughs> and I think that they should make Trace soon. I think that'd be cool. They should figure out games to make for Uno, Dos, Trace, Quattro, Cinco, and then Stace, and then Index. I don't know why, because I think Stace sounds cooler than some of the other numbers in the Spanish in the Spanish language. Stace is one of my favorite words. I don't know. And someone's on here. Some one's probably like, you're saying it completely wrong. Oh, that's fine. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. All right, so... I'm gonna close down this lo-fi. I am barreling down the freeway at 90 miles an hour on my way to Las Vegas. Don't tell anybody. I guess if a cop does stop me, they're gonna be like, were you recording, sir? And I'd be like, yeah, I was recording. I have, how much time do I have? I have 52 minutes. This road works really good on my glasses. I love it. Um, this is the road to wireless go. Actually, I'll say all the equipment in a second. So that being said, I appreciate you guys listening to me ramble. I love you guys. Um, Send me some DMs, ask me some questions, go into threads, do some cool shit with your life, do dope stuff. Hopefully you're going, hopefully you're gonna do life insurance with me. Um, life insurance is a great opportunity to make some extra money. It's a great opportunity to help people. Um, and again, life insurance may not be best, but index universal life insurance may not be for everybody, but life insurance is definitely for everybody because fuck, we're gonna die and we might as well pass on some money so we don't hurt anybody financially when we pass away, I guess. All right, as I always say, be thankful, grateful, and kind, and I will talk with you next time. Bye. You were born in your dying, honey. I'm already crying for you. Thank you so much for listening to the Age of Jeremy Lo Fi episode. Thank you so much for listening to me ramble for almost an hour, I think. Um, I appreciate you. Um, the opening song was. Positive Charge by Gaslight Anthem. The closing song was Gardens by Trevor Hall. I'm recording into my uh, Z1, H1N, Zoom H1N, utilizing the road to go wireless. Um, so the road wireless go to, I guess would be a better way to say that. Uh, and yeah, it's just a lo-fi episode. I'm gonna, uh, I guess, mix this on Steinberg's Cubase and I'm still gonna use Waves a plugin. So hopefully it sounds really, really good. Um, and one last time, as I always say, be thankful, grateful, and kind. We'll talk with you soon. Bye.